Thank you, Dean Finnegan. In addition to being a PhD student, I'm also a researcher at the Masonic Cancer Center, working on a team whose ultimate goal is to understand how we can prevent lung cancer. And I'm here today to tell you about just one study that's part of a much larger research program. More than six million people will die this year from smoking. The majority of these deaths will be to lung cancer. And that's despite researchers making great strides in understanding how tobacco causes disease, public health professionals educating people on the harms related to tobacco use and exposure, and the implementation of policies and interventions to help reduce tobacco use. The reality is people are still smoking and people will continue to die from tobacco-related diseases such as lung cancer. Unless, imagine, what if we could identify those smokers who are at greatest risk of developing lung cancer? What if we could then use this knowledge to develop targeted, effective interventions and treatments? I'm involved in a project that aims to do exactly this. Using a large prospective cohort called the Multi-Ethnic Cohort Study, my colleagues have found that lung cancer risk due to smoking differs across race ethnicity groups and between sex, even at similar levels of smoking. For example, African American males and female smokers are at a greater risk of developing and dying from lung cancer than anybody from any other race ethnicity group, even if they smoke the same number of cigarettes for the same amount of time. And although exposure to cancer-causing chemicals from tobacco may be somewhat similar among smokers, extensive ev evidence suggests that the metabolism and DNA damage and repair in response to these chemicals varies and can partly explain the differing patterns of smoking and lung cancer risk. Yet knowing all of this, we still cannot pinpoint who will exactly develop lung cancer. In fact, not all smokers will develop lung cancer over their lifetime. So what is it about some smokers that makes them more susceptible to this disease? Our study is trying to answer that question. We think that together with the already identified risk factors, exposure to cancer-causing chemicals from additional sources is adding to the risk of lung cancer development in some smokers. One cancer-causing chemical that we are particularly interested in is cadmium. Cadmium is a naturally occurring element found in the Earth's crust. And we are interested in cadmium because cadmium is known to cause cancer in the lung and because smokers can be exposed to cadmium in a few different ways. One way is through smoking a cigarette. And that is because the cadmium in the soil is readily taken up by the tobacco plant. So when a person smokes a cigarette, the cadmium is transferred from the burning tobacco into the smoke and then is inhaled into the lungs. Another important way is through occupational exposures because cadmium is also an environmental and industrial pollutant. And certain industries, like the mining industry, poses a high risk for cadmium exposure. It has also been suggested that certain genes might affect cadmium toxicity and may affect the amount of cadmium that is in our body and can contribute to, can, and can uh, make people more susceptible to its toxic effects. So we know that smoking leads to cadmium exposure. We know that certain occupations expose people to cadmium. And we know that certain genes might contribute to the variation of cadmium levels in some smokers. We know how all of these factors play a role individually. What we don't know is how all these factors play a role together and affect cadmium levels in the body and lung cancer risk in smokers. So we've designed a study using current smokers who are representative of five different ethnic groups to do this. We want to know if smokers working in certain occupations with genes that make them more susceptible to cadmium have higher levels of cadmium in their body. And then we want to develop and test an algorithm that uses all of this information and smoking history to predict lung cancer risk. 
Imagine if we could identify those smokers. How many people could we knock off this devastating mortality statistic? Thank you.